Hello, welcome to our Firebird Database Administrator Training, covering the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in this session by looking at multi-generational architecture and analyzing Firebird's database statistics. So let's start with a brief introduction to MGA, multi-generational architecture. Multi-generational architecture is basically another name for the multi-versioning engine that enables Interbase and Firebird to avoid locking and, at the same time, recover quickly in case of failure due to server crash or power outage, etc., without using a transaction log. Multi-version concurrency control, abbreviated MCC or MVCC, is the method used to prevent two or more users changing a single dataset at the same time. It provides each user connected to the database with a snapshot of the database for that person to work with. Any changes made will not be seen by other users of the database until the transaction has been committed. Firebird and Interbase implement this architecture using record versions. For example, in DBase, when a dataset is altered, DBase overwrites the old version of the dataset with the new version in the database file. The old version of the dataset is lost forever. The Firebird server processes the data manipulation differently. When a dataset is updated, Firebird creates a new dataset, recording the differences between the original dataset in its original state and the new updated content. And when a dataset is deleted, Firebird also creates a new dataset, flagged as deleted. For the simple reason, if a mistake has been made and the transaction needs to be rolled back, the dataset is fully recovered. These record versions are maintained by Firebird parallel to the original datasets until a commit or rollback has been executed or until the server is restarted. When Firebird restarts, it rolls back all active transactions. These record versions are not just safe for open transactions. For example, if I am user A and I open a dataset, make an amendment but do not commit or roll back, I leave the transaction open. User B comes along, makes an update and commits it. User C makes an update and commits that. These record versions that users B and C have made cannot be cleared by the garbage collection because theoretically user A could roll back his transaction, which may affect user B and C's transactions. Such open transactions will inevitably lead to a slower database performance if they are never closed. The system only slows down when one of the clients starts a transaction and doesn't end it properly. We'll take a look at the effects of this later when we look at the log file. Let's now take a look at database statistics. Database statistics are an invaluable insight to what is actually happening on the server. Fiber statistics should be evaluated regularly and kept, because when things do go wrong, it's immensely helpful to be able to see what they look like when things went right. The IB Expert database statistics display the following information for all tables in the database, both as a log script and in tabular form. Table name, location, pages, size in bytes, slots, fill in percent, DP usage percent, and fill distribution. An optimal page fill is around 80%. For each table, the indices statistics include depth, leaf buckets, nodes, average data length, and fill distribution. Further information regarding these statistics can be found in the IB Expert Services menu, Documentation Chapter, Database Statistics. For larger databases, you can take the statistics at regular intervals and keep them for reference to give you a realistic picture of your database. You'll be able to observe any gradual degradation. This is a preemptive measure that allows you to discern and solve the problem before it becomes too bad. Oldest transaction. That's the value you can see here. This is the transaction number that hasn't yet been garbage collected. This value is one of the parameters that can lead to the system slowing down because this value Along with this value, the oldest active transaction, that is the oldest transaction number that hasn't yet been committed or rolled back, compared to the next transaction, what you definitely need to observe is whether the oldest active transaction value changes during runtime. This value should change. Under the oldest transaction, we can see the oldest transaction number that cannot yet be garbage collected. To ensure efficient performance, the difference between this number and the next transaction number should be kept as small as possible. 
This depends, of course, on the number of users and database activity. For example, if you have 160 users working on a database, a difference of 3 to 5,000 is probably perfectly acceptable. However, if there are only two users working on the database, you should be concerned if the difference between the oldest and the next transaction is in the range of 3 to 5,000. The fault can usually be found in the programming. For example, a select query that's never committed or rolled back. One secure way of ensuring active transactions are rolled back is to temporarily disconnect any user that has not actively used the application for the last half an hour. In daily usage, the oldest active transaction should not stay on a specific value for a long time when the next transaction is constantly increasing. If I disconnect and reconnect and disconnect again, the oldest active transaction value increases because IB Expert is forced to start a transaction. The oldest active transaction is now 214 and the next transaction will be 215. This leads to the following. For example, we execute a simple ISQL. Select count star from customer. So, oldest transaction, next transaction. When I reconnect to the database, and again, and start the statistics again, you can see that the next transaction has increased somewhat. This is because my select transaction is still open. If I were to commit this, the oldest transaction value would increase. So you can see, if a programmer forgets to include the commit command, this transaction would remain open and would, after a while, be responsible for slowing down the database performance. Because the minute the program is started, a record version is generated for each single subsequent transaction, whether they are inserts, updates or deletes. Firebird retains this chain of transaction records because the open transaction needs to be able to access the data status at the time the open transaction was started. The Firebird server works in a snapshot mode, so please always take into account when you are programming never to start a query without a subsequent commit or roll back. We can see here that the select remains the oldest active transaction, and regardless of other changes made, even if I make changes in the customer table here, and now back as the old user, select first for first name from customer, this user still sees the original names that were valid at the time he started his transaction. He sees the snapshot that Firebird made at the time. Transaction values are reset to zero following a backup and restore. And, with older Firebird versions, when the value of the next transaction reaches 1.4 billion, you have to perform a backup and restore. This was simply due to capacity problems with the older versions. However, on an average day, with 86,400 seconds, even if 10 transactions are performed each second, and that around the clock, it will take 13 years to reach this number. And if only one transaction is performed each second, you can work for 130 years before you have to do a backup and restore. So, what else can we see? We can look at the global variable, current transaction. Select current transaction from RDB dollar database. This returns the user's oldest active transaction number. If I now go back to my ISQL user and commit, and disconnect and reconnect to the database, I can see the new, oldest active transaction number here. The oldest transaction also increased, because in the meantime, a garbage collection has been run. If the oldest and oldest active transaction numbers are very close to each other, then you know that the garbage collection has just taken place. Now, when my ISQA user queries the first four customers again, you can see the revised names. If the oldest active and active transaction values show a large difference in value, then use the Firebird Utility GFIX to start a database sweep. This explicitly runs a garbage collection, setting the oldest transaction at a higher level if possible. So, that was our introduction to Firebird's multi-generational architecture. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IB Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next tutorial in our series for database administrators. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert. Mm -hmm.